Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and together with ChessLecture.com I'd like to welcome you to today's video. Now today I want to revisit one of the lesser known world champions, Vasily Smyslov. And Smyslov is sort of overshadowed by the great Botvinnik who he has played a match. Actually, he played against Botvinnik three matches, right guys? This is almost like Karpov Kasparov station, where in the first match, it was tied and Botvinnik retained his title. In the second match, Smyslov finally won. And in the third match, Botvinnik made a comeback and beat Smyslov. So that was an epic fight. And the other player that he has overshadowed is the world champion that came after him, Mikhail Tal, who is extremely famous for his attack in chess. Yet, as you guys will see in this game, Smyslov is just as talented in attack as Tal. It just so happened that probably throughout his career, he decided to take a more uh, maybe sane approach, more positional approach. But when he was younger, he was attacking like a beast, given the opportunity. So in this game from 1951, this is the semifinals of the USSR championships. His opponent is trying to confuse Smyslov by playing D6. So normally if you're a D4 player and somebody answers with D6, you have a dilemma. Do you play E4 and transpose to something like a perk? Do you play C4 and allow this very nice E5 idea? For example, c4, e5. This is actually pretty much close to equality, this endgame. Well known. Or do you play knight f3, which allows possible bishop g4 ideas in the future? So this is what Smyslov was debating and his attitude for this game. I will take the center and I will go for the kill. So e4. So we enter a very sharp bishop g5 line of the perk. The idea is quite simple. Queen d2, castle, f4, e5, and ram through black's position. I'm actually surprised that bishop g5 is not as popular these days given how ambitious the system for white is. So you may want to take this idea and add it to your repertoire in case you know somebody who likes to play the perk. Bishop g7, Queen d2, and here black could castle and allow white his idea with castle long f4, e5, or what he did in the game is also quite logical, simply go after the bishop. Bishop f4, g5, bishop g3, knight h5. This is well-known idea. You put the pawns on a slightly weakened squares, but there's a bishop there protecting the king side, and you're gonna go for the bishop on g3. Well-known for many openings, such as the Tory, the London system, except in this specific case, White has full control of the center. So Smyslov decides to continue with his attack. Knight c6, pitting the knight, bishop d7, knight g2, White's mob mobilizing all his forces, and Black says, all right, I'm gonna take, and obviously you wanna take with the h pawn, not the f pawn, you wanna have the open half rather the half open file and the option of playing f4, e5. And Black says, give me your bishops. Give me your bishops. Smyslov obviously doesn't want to play bishop a4. He's only help helping his opponent's attack against the king with b5, another tempo move. So he says, yes, I will give you the bishop pair. And this is the position both players were striving for. So let us pause for a moment and try to evaluate. Generally speaking, right, two bishops are more than a knight. As a matter of fact, half a pawn more than a knight. So why on earth would Smyslov, who is extremely sound positional player, do this? Good question, right guys? And the answer is the following. Look at the kings. White's king is safely tucked away. The rooks are connected. Black is two moves from castling queenside. He probably doesn't want to castle kingside with the 
h file like this. He needs two moves. Well, one, two, but that's not even enough. He may probably want to play e6, queen, e7, and then castle, because with the queen on d7, moves like d5 make, make that bishop quite uncomfortable. So that tells us a pretty simple answer. We have to go for the kill as well. There is no need to waste tempi like king b1 or a3 or rook bringing the rook in. All of these moves are too slow, guys. Rapid attack going after the king. f4, x clan. And Smyslov, who is pretty much grew up in the Soviet Union, coached by, you know, top Russian oh, back then masters, he understood initiative above all when you have a big edge in development. Okay, Black plays his plan, e6. He wants to go queen e7, possibly castle long. Again, you give Black two moves, the bishops may eventually outplay the knights in the long game. But here, Smyslov goes on the offensive. d5, not a difficult move to predict. Black doesn't want to open up the game. He plays bishop back. And I should also point out that after pawn takes, Probably black's idea, or rather white's idea, was to take with the knight. That knight is quite annoying, and then this friend can support him in the center. So these are the ideas that Smyslov had. So there's no need to take. Black retreats. And again, queen e7, followed by castle, and black is slightly cramped, but doing quite well. So here's a question for you guys. Imagine you are Vasily Smyslov, former world champ. What are you going to do? Well, if you said blow open the opponent king, you're on the right track. How are we going to do that? Slightly difficult. We have so many options. Well, we can kind of rule out f5 because he's simply, you're not really going to do much. He can lock things up if he wants to, right? You can take, you can play e5. And Smyslov decides to take first. Pawn takes, and now I really love his next move. So if you thought about taking, taking, and doing the next move, you definitely are a strong attacking player. And here Smyslov takes a page from Mikhail Tal's book and says, Material, who cares? Irrelevant. E5, X clan. Notice what he's doing. He's blowing open the entire board. Black says, okay, prove it. Prove it to me that you can do this. I should also point out that d5, which is a natural way to try to lock up the game, runs into very serious pawn sack, another pawn sack, f5. And after bishop takes e5, knight d4, and with the rook coming in, you know, either rook, this king is pretty much dead in the middle of the board. So Black didn't want to do that for obvious reasons. So he says, I'm just going to take. And now, here comes the critical idea. Why doesn't want to take back on e5? He goes after the weakened king with a quiet move, queen d3. And the devastating check cannot easily be stopped. Notice the king can't come in because the bishop is hit, and the queen can't come in. Again, the bishop is hit. So queen e7 is the defensive try. Now check. Again, you can't block with the queen because I can trade and take the bishop. And black simply plays king d8. King f8 walking into the f-file from the h1 rook is suicidal. So he's hoping to play king here, bishop here or there. And maybe do what is called castle by hand or manual castle. Just get the king into safety. Once again, guys, time matters. Time matters and it's not obvious how to get your pieces in the game. 